Hi there, you're on the Reventil channel. And this is a little tutorial on how I made my night scene. I'm not gonna describe every step of it, but I will highlight the problems I faced on in the process, as well as the nuances that caused the most questions. The only thing I will describe in detail is the import and combining animation from Mixma, because that's where I had the most problems. The tutorial was created more for beginners but I hope that others also find something new for themselves. For convenience, the lesson is divided into chapters. Timecodes will be assigned in the comments below the video. And we'll start with the animation. It's not a secret that the model of the knight was taken from the Mixamo. Working with Mixamo is very simple. Only two tabs, character and animation. On the first tab select a character. In our case this is a knight or as it is called here paladin. I choose this one with a shield and sword. And then go to the animation tab to choose the movement. I write the sword to find only animations with the swords. Choose this one. Apply to our knight. And everything is fine except speed. I doubt that the man can move so fast in metal armor. So I reduce the speed with the overdrive slider. Great. It's much more natural in my opinion. Click download and in the export settings do not change anything except the frame rate. I change it from 30 to 24. Press download. And now we still need one more animation. Looking for. This one was in the scene. We choose and apply it. And also reduce the speed a little bit. Press download. And now in the export settings frame rate is 24. So we need to change only the skin parameter to without skin because we have already downloaded the skin with the first animation. Press download and export our model. Now we go to the blender to import our character. But what we see here, our knight is standing in T pose. And even when we press play, there's no movement whatsoever. The thing is that our knight has two actions at once, or rather one movement and one static pose. The pose is by default. And now we need to switch to our animation. To do this we go to the dopshit panel. We change the window display type to action editor. And here in the small window, which is also a list, we see that we have two actions. One of them named take 001. And the second where says mixamo. This is our animation. We select it and our knight immediately took a fighting stance. Now you can press the spacebar and play the animation. Everything works. Now we can delete the first action. We don't need it. To do this, we go to the outliner, put a filter on the blender file, find the actions. This one, right click and delete it. Then we change the filter back to view layer. And now if we look at the list again, we see that we have only one action. Let's rename our animation. Give it a more succinct name. Let's call it, move one. But in the scene with the knights, he had two, even three movements. So let's import our second animation. As we can see only the armature imported. Just like we wanted. Now in the action editor another animation appears in this list. This is the animation of that armature. Let's rename it to move to. Now we need to apply this animation to our knight. And you can do this in the NLA editor. NLA editor is a panel in which you can create animation clips from keyframes and conveniently operate them, mix and join. NLA editor located right here. Switching. These orange bars are our two animations, but for now they are not active, and to become one, you need to click on these two gray buttons. Now we have two full-fledged animations clips that are also called strips. Working with strips is similar to working in a video editor. We can select and delete the skeleton, we don't need it anymore. As you will notice right after that, his strip is also removed. But the animation itself of course did not disappear. When the strip is selected, we press shift I and we see that we still have movement 2 in the list. Select it and we get the second strip. It appears above the first one. It completely replaces it. That doesn't work for us. 
so we take that strip and drag it to the end of the first animation. Now let's press the spacebar. And so, as you can see, our knight is already assigned two animations. But as you may have noticed there is one problem. Let me press 3 and 9 to get a better view. And let's play the animation again. I hope you noticed that the second animation does not continue from the first one, but starts from the same place as the first animation. To solve this problem, let's start by marking point where the first animation ends. This is the 95th frame. It is most convenient to put a mark with the cursor. To do this, we enter the cursor mode and put the cursor around our knight's crotch. Don't forget to exit from cursor mode. Then we put our animation to the starting point. And now we have good look where our first animation ends. But we still need to move the beginning of the second animation to this point. In the internet I found a several ways how to do it. But it seemed to me the simplest one is with the curves. For that, we need to select the armature. Then select the second stripe and right click. Choose start editing stashed action. After which the strip becomes green and the keyframes appear at the top. Telling us that the animation is ready for editing. So we go to the graph editor. We see our curves here. But we do not need all of them. We need only one curve that called Z location hips. To select only this curve we need to double click on the Z location hips. Press G to make the move active. And press Y. So that our curve does not move to the right or left when we move it. And as soon as we began to drag the curve our knight began to move closer to the cursor. Great. Now we can leave the graph editor and go back to the NLA editor. Let's get out of strip editing mode and let's play the animation again. As you see the problem solved. The second animation starts after the first animation ending. But as you can see there is no smooth transition between them. And to fix this we need to mix the two strips together, or to be more precise the end of the first with the beginning of the second. So we take the second clip and drag it over the first one. Arrange them so that they overlap about 4 frames. Then we go over here. Here there is a barely visible arrow and if you click on it then a little sidebar opens up. And there is a submenu called strip. I end this submenu we need the blend in option. Let's set it to 3 here and you will notice that on the second strip, a little line appeared. This line indicates the intensity with which the two strips are blended together. Now if we play we will see that we have a smoothness between the two animations. Slightly the knight moves his back leg away, as if slipping. But it's hardly noticeable and I don't think it's a problem. Well, I congratulate you because we just combined two animations in one night. As I said before, in the scene with the knights, he had a third animation as well. But there was no problem with that one. It was added in a similar way so I will not show it here. This is the end of the animation chapter. If you didn't understand something right in the comments, I or someone else will answer you. Let's go to the next step. This is what the knight looks like that you just downloaded it from the Mixamo. Not too realistic, is it? The main problem is that his armor looks like a fabric instead of metal. But that's okay, we'll fix that now. Let's take a look at the node tree. It's very simple here. The base color has a texture plugged in. In specular there's a specular map. And normal has a normal map plugged in, respectively. Texture and specular map we do not need, so we delete them. And immediately our knight turned into a white knight. With a dark helmet. The thing is that there is a separate material on the helmet. So. Let's select the helmet and apply the armor material to it. Great. Now let's turn the metallic setting all the way up to give our armor maximum metallicity. Great. But still. At this point, the knight looks extremely unrealistic. Even more unrealistic than with a material from the Mixamo. And there are two reasons for that. He is too bright and too clean. It's too bright because in base color we have a completely white. And we could make it darker, but then our knight still to be too clean. Or we can solve these two problems at once. With a texture. Shift A, select image texture and choose a texture. 
It is strange but I used the texture of concrete. It's the best texture in a lot of experimentation, but the idea is to use any kind of black and white heterogeneous texture. Plug it into base color and voila. It makes the metal look like a metal. We can also plug that texture into the roughness channel. Or we can leave it out. From my observations, by reducing the roughness to about 0.3 we would get about the same result. All material for the night is ready. And if you think there's still something wrong, you are not wrong. I just didn't turn on ambient occlusion to shade the nearby elements, and screen space reflection to reflect them to each other. Now that's all. It's so simple, that I am shamed a bit. Let's go to the displacement. If you guessed what the three planes are in my viewport, then you have very good imagination. It's the ground from the night scene, and that ground is extruded with a displacement. But, we all know that Eevee has a some problem with displacement. And this problem sounds like Eevee doesn't support displacement. It's good that any self-respecting 3D editor has a displacement modifier. That's what we're going to use. But first of course we should find a quality texture of the ground with a quality displacement map. This question would be quite important if we didn't know that texture haven exists. As it is. We go in there, find our ground and download all the maps in 8K resolution. Great. We go back into Blender, select the top plane, create a new material for it. Select it. And press Shift Ctrl T. This will open an Explorer window. If nothing opens, then you have not the Node Wrangler add-on activated. And you should do it. Because it's very useful staff actually. I hope you know how to activate add-ons. In the meantime we find our maps, select all of them and press Principial Texture Setup. After that all our maps are connected to the material. Let's switch to viewport shading mode to see our texture. Cool. Can we now use the displacement modifier? No. Before that plane should be subdivided. So with the plane selected we go into edit mode and subdivide it four times. Then get out of edit mode and put a subdivision modifier on it. And only now we can use displacement modifier. In the Displacement Modifier tab select the item New Texture and on the Texture tab press Open to load the displacement map. Voila! Our plane is extruded, but not too pretty. It still doesn't have enough subdivisions. And to make it more, let's go to Subdivision Modifier and set the viewport rendering to 4 and final render to 5. That's much better. Now let's quickly do the same thing with the bottom plane. And on the third plane let's also put this texture from the texture heaven. And that's it. The environment for the knights is ready. All that's missing is a bit of occlusion. We could end there, but I want to show you one more nuance. Suppose you wanted to scale down the texture of your plane a bit. In material mapping you increase the x-axis and y-axis in the scale parameter. Your texture shrinks and repeats. But as you can see the displacement texture is not synchronized with it. It needs to be corrected separately. And you can do it on the displacement texture tab in the mapping section. Here are x and y values as well as in the node of the mapping material. And as you might have guessed they should match. The only thing is. In displacement mapping, you can only enter integer values. Whereas in the material mapping you can also enter fractional values. Keep this in mind. That's all. Fire. Of course it's just a simple plane. In material we have, mix shader, transparent and emission. And as a factor of blending the video of a real fire. And in order to make the alpha channel work properly in EV, you need to select the alpha blend mode in the material settings in the blend mode parameter. And in shadow mode you need to select none. Then in the emission we choose a color similar to the color of fire and increase the intensity. That's it, the fire is ready, because it's actually a real fire. But here's the thing. Naturally, the EV don't support the emission of light. So to make it seem like our fire is emitting light you have to either bake the light or put a lamp over the fire. I chose the second way because there is less fuss with this. By the way, it's the only source of light besides the HDRI. And HDRI itself looks like this. It's taken from HDRI Haven of course. I stretched it a little so that in the scene you could see only the sky and nothing else. As you can see, everything is simple. 
And anyone who knows Blender a bit can do this. Anyway, I also posted the scene on Gamroad. And you can download it for free. Or you can pay for it you if you want to support the channel. And I would be very grateful if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.